Global Positioning System, GPS. GPS, the technology that keeps us from getting hopelessly lost and wandering like the nomads of old. Before this space age navigation system, road trips were a chaotic mess of unfolded maps, backseat screaming matches, and bitter I told you to turn left accusations. The genius idea to create GPS actually started back in the 1970s as a military science project called Navstar. Basically, the US military needed a way to keep track of their toys, you know, troops, missiles, equipment, and that weird uncle with strong political views, they couldn't risk something silly like accidentally bombing Canada instead of their intended targets. So the masterminds behind Navstar came up with an idea to launch 24 satellites into space that would broadcast their precise location data down to specialized receivers on Earth. With some complex math and geometry straight out of a Pythagorean nightmare, those receivers could calculate their exact position anywhere on the globe. Boom! An incredibly over-engineered compass was born. Finally, by the mid-90s, the first fully operational GPS constellation was up and running for military use. Troops could navigate with pinpoint accuracy from the middle of a desert to, well, a slightly different part of the desert, if needed. It didn't take long for some clever civilians to see the potential here and modify the technology for cars, computers, and smartphones to help us locate the nearest restaurant or stop us from getting lost on the way to grandma's house. Radio. Imagine a reality where the only means of communication available was to wait for the town crier to move across town screaming at the top of his lungs about every new information. Or if you had to wait for a smoke signal or pigeon to bring across information to you that's at that point already a few months old. Well, a man called Guglielmo Marconi was quite literally fed up with pigeons and the resounding annoying voice of the village town crier and he decided to do something to fix the issue. In 1901, he did something that must have seemed like pure witchcraft at the time. He used electromagnetic waves to send Morse code signals across the Atlantic Ocean. It doesn't seem like a lot, but imagine you were together with Marconi when he just started fiddling with a weird little antenna contraption and suddenly a message starts tapping out of a receiver. Remember, it's 1901, so you're probably jumping out of your skin thinking Marconi was a witch talking and communicating with dead people. Well, thankfully, these people still appreciated the power of science, so Marconi was not burned at the stake or forced to confess to witchcraft. Instead, he started harnessing the power of these invisible electromagnetic waves and paved the way for radios as we know it today. Of course, those early radios were pretty basic, they were big and clunky with enough dials and knobs that make tuning in a station feel like you're trying to defuse a bomb. One wrong move and you'd be met with a deafening blast of static. Still, people went wild with this new invention. Suddenly, they could get news and entertainment directly into their living rooms without having to rely on town criers for our daily dose of news and terrible puns. Airplane. A very, very long time ago, if you wanted to move from New York to LA, you'd probably have to saddle a horse, put your walking boots on, and hit the long road ahead. Or if you were rich enough to book a ride on a ship, you'd risk dying at sea because it'll take months to get to your destination. Before 1903, everyone knew soaring the skies was reserved for birds alone. And even thinking that humans could fly using a bunch of mathematical calculations and rickety wooden gliders would have landed you in an asylum faster than you can say cheese. However, two brothers, Wilbur and Orville Wright, started to consider that humans could fly too. We just needed wings to flap around like the birds had. And since we didn't come with flying limbs, the two brothers decided to create an artificial one, quite literally. Wilbur started to study how the birds flapped their wings and glided through the air, and on one occasion he literally tried jumping off a roof with wings constructed from feathers and clothes. Well, that didn't work, and thankfully he only managed to give himself a bruised arm and not end up six feet under. The brothers encountered so many challenges in the following years, but it was after a whole decade that they were able to have a breakthrough. And on December 17th, 1903, the first airplane that could actually fly was invented. Since its invention, the original airplane design has been changed to make it faster and safer, of course. Television. 
After the invention of the radio, it took 27 more years for people to get tired of just listening to a random voice droning on and on about the weather or politics from a tiny metal box. People really just wanted to quite literally put a face to the voice. Well, it all became a possibility when in 1927 a young farm boy genius named Philo Farnsworth did what seemed impossible. He transmitted the first all-electronic television image. Philo had his aha moment when he was plowing a field one early morning because where better to conceive world-changing innovations than knee-deep in dirt and manure? Anyway, while he plowed, he noticed the plower made parallel rows of lines form in the soil. And that's when the concept of scanning an image line by line with electrons hit him. So Philo started experimenting in his basement. He took an old scanning box and a weird glass tube called a cathode ray tube, whose job was to convert all the electric signals into a visual display, basically. The scanning box captured the picture by shining a beam of electrons across it line by line from top to bottom really fast, and those moving electron beams got turned into electrical signals that could be sent through the air just like a radio signal. On the other end, Philo had another cathode ray tube that could take those electrical signals and recreate the picture by firing an electron beam to draw the lines on the screen one at a time from top to bottom over and over again. When Philo turned everything on, the first thing he saw on the tiny screen was a little swinging line, but he kept working and working until finally he got a full picture to show up and move around. Of course, those first TVs were tiny and blurry, but Philo's invention allowed TVs to get better and better over time, and we got the nice big high-definition TVs we have today to watch all our favorite cat videos, Netflix, and chill, and catch up on all the celebrity gossip. Remember when TV was the ultimate tech innovation? Well, our Discord is the new frontier, so join now to chat with us and get all the details on every new invention. Cloning. The very first time you heard the word cloning, you're probably thinking of a crazy sci-fi movie in a futuristic Earth 20,000 light years where scientists are busy growing stronger, healthier, and more talented humans in a large liquid glass tube. This creepy scene has actually been around for a while and started as far back as 1885. But don't freak out yet because there were no big grown bodies and gooey liquid, but simple-celled organisms like bacteria in a tiny petri dish. However, in 1996, they soon graduated to creating the replica of a mammal, which seemed impossible. But a scientist and biologist named Ian Wilmot successfully cloned a sheep they named Dolly. To create Dolly, the scientist first took out a cell from an adult sheep and hit the rewind button on its genetic code. So the cell had something called sheep's DNA that was basically a step-by-step -step instruction to clone a whole new sheep. So the next thing they did was to take another sheep's egg, remove all the DNA from that one so it was just an empty shell, and then put the adult sheep's DNA inside the empty egg. However, they needed a warm, safe place for the special egg to grow, so they found a surrogate mommy sheep and basically stuffed the egg inside her. After a few months, a tiny lamb popped out and was an exact copy of the adult sheep that her DNA came from. They had successfully made a clone. Dolly looked just like her parent sheep and had the same personality and everything. It was like making an identical twin even though she wasn't born at the same time. Of course, the aim of cloning wasn't to breed armies of sheep doppelgangers for world domination. It was to advance medicine and potentially grow human cells, tissues, and organs for transplants. World Wide Web since you are currently scrolling through YouTube watching the Evaluator videos or shopping from an online store, you better thank Tim Berners-Lee, the genius who invented the World Wide Web. Before the web, the internet was like a confusing maze of text-based services that only very intelligent people could navigate and was not accessible to the masses. Each computer was like an island, all separate from each other, and to get information from one island to another was really, really hard. This was something that really bothered Tim, and he was determined to figure out a better way for the computers to talk to themselves. However, in 1989, when Tim was working as a computer scientist at the European Council for Nuclear Research in Switzerland, he thought of a crazy idea to build a web of knowledge that would connect all the separate documents and files scattered across the internet together. He imagined being able to look at words, pictures, videos, and anything else on any computer no matter where it was. 
It's sort of like a spider web, but for information. With a clear idea and vision of what he wanted to build, he got to work. Through his powers of elite coding wizardry, he invented HTML for creating pages, URLs for addresses, and HTTP for data transfer protocols. Basically, all the geeky plumbing to make this World Wide Web idea actually work. Then, in 1990, he created the world's first website a single page describing the World Wide Web project itself. Not exactly a viral hit out of the gate, but it kicked off an internet revolution, and soon after, Timmy's little web experiment began to spread like an infectious strain of the digital plague, and that's why today you have Google and Safari. Personal Computers The first computer was an 1,800-square-foot machine that literally weighed 30 tons, the same size as a loaded garbage truck. If you were rich enough to buy one at the time, it would come in a large shipping container and would need to have its separate building because it obviously can't fit inside your house. Back then, computers were these huge room-sized machines that only big businesses, universities, and the government could afford. So if you ever wanted to use one, you had to go to a special computer center and wait in a long line. However, in the 1970s, a bunch of creative tinkerers and college dropouts from Silicon Valley had a radical idea. What if normal people could have their very own computer at home or in the office? A personal computer that wasn't the size of a semi-truck. Well, this idea became a plan, and soon enough, Steve Wozniak and his friend Steve Jobs started experimenting in their garage, building prototypes of smaller, more affordable computers that could basically do the same thing as the giant mainframe. They'd solder together circuits and wire codes for things like video games, word processors, and spreadsheets, and in 1976, they released the first ever Apple product, Apple One. It looked like a typewriter attached to a wood case, but this invention kicked off the personal computer revolution. Hubble Space Telescope The Hubble Space Telescope is basically a super-powerful camera that captures incredibly detailed pictures and videos of planets, stars, galaxies, and other amazing things in outer space. But instead of being used on Earth, it orbits around our planet up in space non-stop. The idea to build Hubble came when scientists had a really hard time using regular telescopes to get clear images of distant cosmic objects because every time they try to, our planet's atmosphere gets in the way and blurs the view. So they decided to build and launch a telescope into space where there is no atmosphere blocking the crisp vision. Although sending such a large, complex telescope into space came with all sorts of challenges. The telescope had to be compact enough to fit into a rocket for launch, yet unfold perfectly once in space. It needed specialized mirrors, cameras, and sensors to function flawlessly without a crew operating it hands-on. After decades of design and testing, the telescope, which is the length of a large school bus and weighs as much as two adult elephants, was launched into space on April 24, 1990 by NASA and the European Space Agency. Their hard work paid off as Hubble quickly started beaming back jaw-dropping images of galaxies, nebulae, asteroids, and more in breathtaking detail and clarity. So today, scientists can predict when the Earth will be hit by the asteroid that will destroy it, like they did in 2012. Fiber optics. You know when you use a garden hose and water flows through the long bendable tube from one end to the other? Well, that is precisely how fiber optics work, but instead of water, they use light. Fiber optics are long, very thin strands of glass or plastic that can carry light signals over long distances, but they actually look a bit like pieces of string or hair. These glass fibers have a special coating around them that acts like a mirror on the inside. This coating helps reflect the light rays along the fiber so the light bounces along the middle instead of escaping out the sides. It's kind of like when you shine a flashlight into one end of a long tunnel, except the light keeps bouncing off the the walls until it reaches the other end. Except with fiber optics, the tunnel is a super thin glass strand. Before these glass strands of sorcery came along, the internet was about as fast as a grandpa trying to send a fax, and we relied on copper wiring to transmit data for phones, internet, and cable TV. But those metal lines could only carry very little information, and the signal would always degrade and get mixed up, which was really frustrating. So when fiber optics came along, it must have felt like scales were falling off people's eyes and they could suddenly see the world better. 
Instead of using electricity, fiber optics used light pulses, which would carry information faster and over greater distances without losing quality. Now you can effortlessly stream cat videos and swap memes at the speed of light. Holography Holography is a technology that produces super-realistic 3D images that appear to float in the air and look like the picture is jumping right at you. While this sci-fi technology feels straight out of the Star Wars future we were all promised as kids, the concept of holograms dates all the way back to 1947 when Hungarian physicist Dennis Gabor decided to produce a super-special photo, but instead of using a regular camera, he planned to use a laser beam. The idea behind this was that the laser light would bounce off the object you wanted to recreate, and that light gets captured onto a piece of film or glass. But here's the mind-bending part. The laser light doesn't just capture what the object looks like from the front, it actually records all the light waves bouncing around the entire object from every angle. So when you shine another laser through that recorded pattern on the film later, it recreates all those light waves in exactly the same way. And that makes the object appear to jump out in 3D, just like the real thing was actually there. It's kinda like the hologram is tricking your eyes and brain into seeing all the dimensions and depths instead of just a flat picture. You can even walk around the hologram and see it from different sides. Of course, turning this concept into reality was the harder part. It took some seriously complex math, intense optics, and more than a few coding headaches to make the visuals look right. The first successful hologram wasn't even captured until the early 1960s using a painstaking laser process. These holographic images soon started looking less like ghostly hallucinations and more like cool 3D scenes you could practically walk into.